Ask yourself this question. Would you ever use a human baby or toddler as a flotation device? Probably not, unless you just survived an airplane crash full of screaming kids and are feeling morally ambivalent. Then again, desperate times call for desperate measures, right? As strange as that idea may seem, that's exactly what ants do. An ant raft is the clever and morally ambivalent way that ants save themselves in case of flooding. And they put their ant babies or larvae and pupae right at the bottom where the water is most turbulent. These ants are using their feet, arms, legs and mandibles to hold on to each other while staying afloat. To see this happen, you may need to go to the floodplains of Switzerland or to a lake in Southeast Asia. In fact, any place where water spills over and floods has a good chance of hosting one of these living rafts, including all over the United States. So how does an ant raft work? Worker ants work together to protect the queen ant by putting her in the center of the raft to protect her from the water. The worker ants put the pupae, larvae and young ants on the bottom because young ants and larvae are more buoyant. They float better than the bigger, more mature ants, so putting them on the bottom helps to ensure a greater number of ants survive. Also, the pupae, larvae and young ants are fat and their fat protects them from cold water. According to one study published by the Public Library of Science, without this technique of throwing baby ants under the bus, so to speak, 25 to 50 percent of worker ants would have at least some contact with the water. This would cause many ant deaths and endanger the colony. It takes adult ants more than an hour to recover after they've been in contact with the water or submerged in it. So by putting the baby ants closest to the water, the adult ants can get back to business as usual soon after reaching solid ground. And since the baby ants' fat protects them from the cold water, they recover faster than an adult does. Do all ants do this? Well, most of the ants who make rafts are fire ants. They nest in the soil near riverbanks, ponds and well-watered lawns, hence their rafting ability. Fire ants are known to be both aggressive and resilient. In fact, during Hurricane Harvey in Texas in 2017, they survived the floods by clumping together on ant rafts made up of up to 100,000 ants. Now that's cooperation. There are a few things we can learn from floating ant rafts. First, stay the heck away from them. These ants are stinging, aggressive survivors who work together and have no problem attacking people. They're eusocial, meaning they can't live on their own and survive through cooperation. Second, they work together to make large structures that switch from behaving like a solid to behaving like a liquid. Many biologists, roboticists and engineers are fascinated by how ants are able to do this. So, hopefully you've learned about the power of cooperation from this video. And also, to stay away from ant rafts. Building living rafts by using their babies as floats. That's what fire ants do. And that's what makes them crazy creatures.